Decisions, decisions. Let's go make some. <laughs> What's up YouTube, Groover here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Dart Zone slash Adventure Force Liberator. Uh, this is something I have been wanting to get my hands on since the beginning of the summer. I finally was able to pre-order some on Walmart when it went live a couple of days early, and I actually got two of them, thankfully. And I gotta say, this has been a lot of fun to play around with, and what we're gonna do is actually something a little bit more different than what I normally would do. Normally I would do a review on this, then I would do a separate mod guide video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the review and mod guide in this video. So when we do the internals, I'll be doing the mod on this as well. Just some very basic stuff. Um, I actually have been working on the second one. So I will be able to tell you some of the things I did to that one that we may not be doing to this one, but are possible. The other thing I want to do is I also want to do a comparison of this to this and this is the busby monorail and it's the only other thing i can think of that was close enough to this that i could do a fair comparison of now yes this is a dart blaster this is a rival blaster why am i not doing the uh atlas again or even a artemis or hades or even the um uh hypnos Reason being is because the way this one works is the closest to the way this works. Uh, the others all are, yes, pump action shotgun style blasters. Uh, however, they all use rival magazines. So, or built in stupidly absurd large inline clips. Um where these are a little bit more to, like I said, akin to each other. We'll get into that later. So first, and also, you know what, just to make things easier, if you want to jump around the video, I'm going to put a list of the times of what starts where over here. And also down in the description to make it a little easier or not. No, not in the description, probably a pinned comment, just so it'll be easier for you guys to jump around to what you basically want to see. So, first things first, let's start off with the actual review of this. This is by Dart Zone for the Adventure Force line, which makes this, again, a Walmart exclusive. So, unfortunately, you're not going to be seeing this unless they make a Dart Zone version for, like, Target or Amazon or whatever. Uh, it holds 10 rival rounds, and the way you load it is you have to prime the slide back all the way, and you have this little door here. Lower it down and you get a little loading ramp. You get your cheese balls. You load them up. And again, this holds 10. Now, when you put them in, just make sure you do push them all the way because there would be, there's a chance it could jam if it doesn't go in all the way. Oh, and it loaded. Also, depending on how quickly you push the slide back forward or however your blaster is working you may wind up having a dry fire the first round and because this is still bone stock you can't re-rack it to get another shot in but once you do it works perfectly fine one of the things though is i do need to point out is you will notice that there is a secondary trigger here no this is not a flywheel this is actually your trigger lock. Now, I d I'm not 100% sure about the, uh, was it the X-Shot Blasters, because I haven't seen those particular ones yet. But all the Dart Zone slash Adventure Force Blasters, like the Titanium, the Powerball, all of those, they have a little trigger, they have a uh, little um, safety switch along with all of the nerf rival blasters as well they usually have a little switch by the by the triggers either a little kind of like actual safety switch or a button dart zone didn't do it on this one instead it opted for a like a little secondary trigger now yes in order to 
pull the trigger. This does have to be depressed. However, if you're holding on to this thing pretty well, you're it's always going to be depressed anyway. So it's not it's I think more designed for this way if you put it down somewhere the trigger's not going to accidentally let go like if you drop it or something so there's that also like all adventure force blasters it has the little team indicator plates uh it comes with green already there and then of course i just throw one on the floor because why not it has the red and blue ones that you can put on so if you want to if you want it to just be very conspicuous or play on a blue team you leave the blue on if you want a little bit more color put the red or if you're playing on red or you can leave the green on whichever you want uh what um i gotta say the the build of the blaster is actually really nice uh plastic feels very sturdy uh, you do hear a rattle, but that is actually the spring for the magazines. Also, because it does have the openings here, you can actually see, kind of, how many rounds you have left. So, that's actually a neat little feature as well. It also has, if you pull it back, you have a D-prime here, which if something gets jammed here, all you have to do is pull this down. And it actually releases this so you can put in push in the uh rival rounds or do what you need to to try and you know unseat your game but oh one other neat little feature um i know this looks like kind of like a picatinny rail or something that wouldn't really work with nerf but while it doesn't lock this actually does hold nerf accessories <laughs> So if you have something like a light or a, or a Nerf scope that you may want to put on this just for being tactical and all, you can. So that's just something neat I wanted to show off. So let's go over to the workbench. I'm going to open this baby up, show you what the internals look like, and also do a few quick minor mods that basically anyone can do for these things. Okay, so as always, for sake of time, I've already unscrewed everything here. The priming handle comes off in two pieces. You have two metal rods actually poking out through here, so there is good stability here. There's only one hidden screw, and that's right underneath uh, the priming bar, which you'll notice if you, whenever you're priming it or so, but in case you unscrew everything and you realize why isn't this opening, chances are that's the one. Now, also keeping that in mind, like the titanium and the powerball you don't actually have to open the handle on this because the blue part comes off in a separate piece the only reason you'll want to open up the handle is to do something with this trigger lock which we will do when i start actually doing the mods on this other than that you have very basic internals here you have your plunger tube you have where um, the rounds load into you have where the rounds hold. So you have your plunger tube, the spring, your plunger rod, a very far, which is actually really sturdy, which is good. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Your catch and your trigger back here. This is one lock. This is actually your priming lock. Your trigger lock is housed in here, and I will show you what that looks like. Because we are going to remove that as well. So there is the trigger, and there is the trigger lock. Now, these are very easy things to remove. The To remove your trigger lock, all you have to do is lift your trigger slightly, take out the secondary trigger, and that's it your trigger locks out now you can just put the trigger back if you would like but in doing so you will be leaving a gap in the actual handle and thus crap can get in there and plus some people may find it uncomfortable whatever super simple fix for this is super glue just take a little super glue 
and only do this on one side. All right, you don't want to super glue both sides in because then you will never be able to open up the handle. Only do this on one side. You're going to want to do it towards the back so this way also it kind of stays out of your off of your hands and away from the front anyway. Put a little glue right there. There. And a little bit on the body itself so when it's actually touching stuff. Turn it over. Be careful you don't get glue on your hands. Put it in its all put it as far back as it can go. Hold it there for a few seconds or a minute or so so the glue sets. And also, if you even want to, while it's there, take your super glue and just put a little dab right where it's connecting in its holder. And again, just hold it there for a few seconds so that it sets up. If you have an accelerant, awesome. I don't, I really need to get some of that stuff. Um, but once the glue sets up and you're good to go, eh, not like that, not like that. If the glue is not holding, um, I just kind of wipe the whatever was on there off with my fingers. Um, you may need to get a little bit of either soapy water or if you have a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just clean off anything that's on there. So this way it gives the glue a little bit more stuff to grab onto. You can also sand it if you want to. It's not really necessary. On my other one, I literally just put the super glue in it and left it. So I am just going to actually leave it like that and close this back up so I don't lose the trigger or anything like that. And with that, the trigger lock is now removed, so you don't have to worry about having to make sure that this is now depressed when you're trying to fire your blaster. Now, the second trigger, or the second lock that is in here is this one, which is your priming lock, which means once you prime it, you can't reprime it. So if you wanted to do, let's say, an extra round, or if something didn't load properly, or if you want to sh actually shotgun the shotgun, Again, very easy to do. You just have to lift the plunger out of the way. And there is one screw holding it in place, and that is the one right there. Unscrew it like that. Uh, you can do it as viciously or easily as you want. You know, no harm, no foul. And that's that. Now, if the priming bar does come undone or something, just remember the configuration is the spring and everything go towards the top of it. So let's put the plunger back in all nice and easy. Don't forget to line it up like that. And there you go. This is now completely lock free. If again, you want to switch out the spring, it, it can take something stronger. Um, this is actually what I wound up putting in my other one. I want to say, I think it's a K25. I don't think it's a K26, uh, but it's definitely a stronger spring. This is what the original one looks like. Um, it does have a good body to it. Obviously not as good as this one and i'm not trying to squeeze this down because it has two very sharp edges but and it's also not the length i used i actually did cut into about what this is and it compresses it fires fine it's no problem so 
Let me put this back together and then I'm going to give you the comparison to the monorail, which again is the closest thing I can think of or the best thing I can think of to actually compare this to. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to do a comparison between the two blasters, the monorail and the liberator. Um, I'm going to just kind of go over my feelings between the two of these. Again, this is all subjective and whether or not whichever one you prefer is entirely up to you. But just going over the blasters themselves, the monorail, uh, we'll start with the pricing. The monorail is about 15 bucks, um, maybe 17 if you can find it online, depending on where you're getting it from. And I've only ever found these in stores like Kmart, um, at least here on the East Coast. I haven't really, I've never seen them at Target, never saw them at Walmart. I only ever found them at Kmart. So I don't know if that made them a Kmart exclusive, but here in Jersey, they were a Kmart exclusive. The Liberator goes for about $18.00. You're going to only find it at Walmart because it is branded for the Adventure Force line. Unless um, Dart Zone makes a Powerball version or something along those lines, you're probably not going to see this at Target. The length of the blasters, the monorail is a little bit longer than the Liberator. However, I don't see that as kind of as either a pro or a con because you're still basically firing the darts right out from there and you're firing rival balls right out from here so you're really not having any extra additional dead space or anything like that um the dart doors you have your dart door under here you have your dart door back here uh you can load as many rounds up to the 10 that you want in here and you're totally fine here you have to load six because it is rear loading you would wind up priming this thing to just get one dart through, whereas this you can just load one dart or load one rival round and fire one rival round. Uh, the jam door is, for this is your dart door, so everything is just all compacted right here. Your jam door is right here, and it does get loose over time, which honestly kind of sucks. It would have been nice if they had like a little bit of a snap or even a release button to open this rather than it just being kind of like a loose friction fit uh comfort wise the priming grips between the two i honestly do prefer the monorail priming bar or priming handle over this one uh it's much more ergonomic it's very comfortable to hold this is okay uh you do get uh traction on it with the finger grips here and on the other side where here it's this whole part is a grip. Um, it's also much more rounded off where this is, it kind of stays a little boxy to more match the style of this particular blaster. Uh, safety wise, this just has a trigger lock while the blaster is, um, while the blaster's priming handle is all the way back. So if you push this all the way back, it does have a lock, but once it's forward, you can pull the trigger whenever you want. This, we know it had the stupid lock. This one is now fixed, so you can do this whenever, but out of the box, you have to push this in order to use that. Uh, regarding, actually going back to the darts, both you can, use, you can kind of figure out how many darts or rounds you have. Uh, you do have the window up here, which you can see the darts feeding. It will also help you to see if anything is jamming. I'll get to that in a second. And along here, while the slots aren't that big, you can see where your rounds are at that point. Granted, once it gets under here, it's kind of a little harder to see, but, you know, that's the nature of the beast. The handles themselves both are actually very comfortable this may look kind of bulky but it actually is at least for me very comfortable this looks awkward but again is actually comfortable to hold um even with this little inlet here for uh the fingers it may look like this might be a little pinchy for someone of my hand stature 
but it actually isn't. It's not really that uncomfortable for me. So either way, again, your mileage may vary on it, but I, I'm fine with either one of those handles. Um, but also getting into it is now getting back to the ammo on it, though. Obviously, this takes rifles. This takes darts. This can only take full-length darts. And I'm talking about, like, elite-length darts. Not even, like, Kush or X-Shot, because they may jam in here. Unfortunately, one of the downsides to the monorail is it's very ammo-specific. If you do not have the right length of dart in here, you could jam the blaster. If you use a Kush dart or an X-Shot dart, there's a chance you could jam it. I've never used Waffles or AccuStrike darts, so I really can't speak to that aspect of it. But even sometimes, even normal full-length darts, if they are, let's say, well-worn or loved or, you know, kind of used more than three times, there's a chance you could jam in this too. Because when I first got this, I didn't have any problems. I tried using some of the darts that actually came with this thing that had been used a couple of times, and I actually had a jam. So, you're talking about something that is, this is extremely finicky. This, on the other hand, while, yes, it does use rival rounds, it can use either one. It can use the cheese balls, or it can use the little yellow golf balls. So, unfortunately, I've never really needed, or not, I shouldn't say needed, I've never actually bought third-party rival rounds so i really can't speak to them so again cliched your mileage may vary on those but the dart zone cheese balls are extremely cheap i mean you're talking about like 20 bucks for 100 rounds it's not bad or or you can usually find them on sale for like 50 for like 50 rounds for like eight bucks Again, that's not bad. So, not to mention, I have seen more Rival Blasters uh, kind of being fielded more often than not as of late. Especially when it comes to uh, Super Stock and in footage I've seen for an HBZ game. Um, you know, hopefully End War. Looking forward to it. So, you'll be able to probably field ammo if you need to on this. Not to mention, Rival Rounds will fit in a dump pouch a lot more. You'll be able to fit more Rival Rounds into a dump pouch than you would loose darts because, again, size-wise comparison. So, I mean, you could run this at a war, but if you pick up the wrong dart, you're running the risk of being extremely screwed. So, there's that. I'm going to kind of end the comparison here because I think you've kind of seen a pretty good comparison on these. There are things about the monorail that I like. There's things about this that I like. There's a fair bit about this that kind of irks me. Not much on this that irks me, but um, why don't I give you my final thoughts on the blaster and we'll all wrap this up. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Liberator. Uh, I really like this. Uh, for all of its little hiccups that you may see out of box... For the price point, what you can do with it, what can be done with it, and even overlooking some of those hiccups and just dealing with them, this is definitely a Rival Blaster well worth its money. You're talking about 18 bucks for a Rival Shotgun. It is slight, it's maneuverable, um... Yeah, you can't really use it one-handed, but holding it one-handed is very comfortable and not, like, heavy or anything like that. So, this is definitely going to be my go-to rival blaster, possibly for End War next year. I don't know, maybe. Um, and this is just going to go back into the uh, fun blaster pile. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, why would I recommend this over something like the... Hades or you know all the others and all the Atlas and the Hypno you have to rely on magazines for in order to load because you're talking about the same basically the same the same holding capacity as these 
but you have to keep switching out the mag so you always have to have the mags on you whereas this you just have to do this and you can just load um the atlas oh not the atlas the artemis and the hades yes they have a much larger ammo capacity than this thing but you're also talking about much bigger blasters the artemis is probably a i would say see what i said about, about the um the dark door the atlas is most probably about this size or this long and about that big so you're talking about almost two blasters stacked on top of each other the Hades is a beast of a blaster. I remember the one that Carlos or one of Carlos's friends had last year at APOC. And that thing was freaking huge. So you're talking about something where this could, you could almost even hold on to as a secondary as opposed to that's got to be your primary. There's no way you're running that as a secondary. So not to mention price wise, this is $18. The Artemis still goes for about 40 or so, and I've seen the Hades going for anywhere between, depending on where you get it from, 60 to 80. So you're talking about a blaster that is double and anywhere from triple to quadruple what you're paying for this. So that is definitely, in my opinion, well worth the money. The others, it's worth the money if you feel it is. But that being said, that's where we're going to end this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content me and Arlene do here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Liberator and it, maybe how it stacks up against the other uh, rival blasters. And also, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing the silliness here on the channel. Uh, but again, thank you all very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Later.